Welcome back to Gunshots guys. This week, the Fabon L4S. This is the latest addition to the self-loading um, shotgun range. And it's aimed pretty squarely at uh, sort of, shall we say, intermediate clay stroke um, game shooters. Um, it's a very light, very well balanced gun. And um, it has some interesting features which I'm gonna talk about today. Um, it's it's a nice gun. Um, so, the, um, the gun itself has some new stuff happening with it that um, I think definitely makes it stand apart from its competitors, including this extremely noisy uh, foreign bolt. Um, it's, well, one of the main things is this, the, um, the separate bolt that holds the barrel on, and this mag tube, which is specifically designed to only hold uh, three rounds instead of the normal four. So were this an FAC gun, it would hold a maximum of um, max capacity of four rather than a max capacity of five. Um, this apparently has shifted the weight of the gun back a little, meaning that um, it balances slightly more neutrally than traditional sounds. Nobody's gonna miss you coming if you are doing up this bolt. Um, the gas system is specifically designed to work with pretty much any weight of cartridge and I've tried 21 through this cycle and no problem at all. Um, and as I said, it's very light, very well balanced, very, very handy. Um, it has a, a quite a thin uh, 8mm game rib, just a front bead, no mid bead, no tram line. Um, and it's a perfectly serviceable um, setup comes to the shoulder very nicely. Um, a little short in the stock, I think, as standard, but most autos seem to suffer from that. Um, the radius of the uh, pistol grip has a slight palm swell, nothing too huge, but it fills the hand reasonably well, and the trigger's not too bad in terms of a reach. It's the usual thing with autos, they tend to be a little bit on the long side, I have little stumpy fingers. And the actual trigger pull itself, it's an auto trigger pull, it's not great, but it's about as good as any I've tried. Um, the checkering on the wood on this gun, is, is the wood itself is actually quite nice for um, what this gun sells for at 850 pounds, although I have seen them cheaper. Um, the checkering is quite interesting. You've got standard um, regular checkering as well as this nice stippling that you see uh, here and here. And generally speaking, it gives a nice positive grip on the gun. The shape of the forend itself is very, very nice. It's a it's a nice sort of ergonomic package, shall we say, as guns go. Handling wise, it's absolutely fine. Um, I've shot this at a variety of presentations and had a, a pretty good results with it. It is very light, um, so it takes a little bit of getting used to, obviously, if you're used to a heavy gun like me. It's definitely a gun that you've got to uh, drive very positively uh, through targets. You can't just afford to um, steer it. Um, but all in all, Generally, I, I've quite enjoyed shooting this gun. There are some um, some gotchas with it, and to be honest, there's no wrong with it. It's not um, it's not got any glaring faults, and as an aesthetic, um, it is quite a pretty gun. I think the uh, the lines of it, although they are purely for aesthetic, I just I just think this is quite a nicely designed gun um, versus some sort of more utilitarian uh, shotguns. Um, the the gotcha, I think, is probably this. <laughs> the fact that the, 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 the slide release is on the wrong side. Wrong side, different side. Um, it, it, is, it does take a bit of getting used to when you're loading the gun, for sure. Um, it, it, it's exactly the same. You're putting pressure on with the same position, but you're using your forefinger to, uh, to depress the button rather than your thumb. Um, other than that, though, I've had no issues with it. It's cycled flawlessly. It's shot very, very well. Where it sits in its market segment at 850 quid is up against the likes of the Browning Maxus and the Winchester SX4. And it sits very well in amongst that, that group of guns. They're, um, they're all it's sort of aimed at a certain market segment and they're all much of a muchness in terms of design. I think if, you, um, if you're going to pick one up, it will be very much a case of try the one try all three, pick the one that you like, pick the one that, that suits your uh, physique, suits your sense of style, shall we say, because they are quite different guns in terms of design. Uh, I think the wood on that's probably a bit nicer than the stuff you get on the Winchester. Uh, and it's, I don't know, I mean, 
in terms of market differentiators, these things are steel proofed up to a ridiculous um, pressure and they are supposed to be um, uh, very very fast in terms of the way that the bolt cycles and this um, obviously the uh, the fact that the forend has that separate bolt arrangement and the balance and all the rest of it but whether or not you're going to be able to tell the difference when you actually handle them don't know um, I certainly haven't had any problems with it and I've enjoyed shooting it the gun comes with a rather nice and quite thick recoil pad and it definitely handles recoil well um, I've shot a variety of loads through this and it's a nice soft shooting uh, easy moving gun shall we say it's definitely not something that you're gonna worry about I had my wife shooting this briefly uh, with some 21s in just to see how she got on with it and my wife's only five foot um, and she enjoyed it too it was absolutely fun um, Let's talk a little bit about what you get with the gun. Well, for a start, it comes in a very unusual uh, sort of semi-rigid uh, canvas case um, with a zip closure and a, uh, a nylon handle. Inside there you get, rather cleverly, uh, the gun comes pre-drilled with mounting points for sling swivels and you get a set of those with the gun which you can add or remove if you intend to use the gun with uh, a sling. Uh, you get a set of chokes um, Raj unusual uh, and of course a choke key. Uh, the chokes are however uh, labelled up in distances so you get sort of close, medium, long rather than an actual constriction. I haven't had a chance to mic the chokes but I'm assuming essentially it's quarter half and three quarter or quarter half three quarter and full. In conclusion then the L4S um, well it sits in right in that sort of market segment with the other guns of the type the, um, the Browning Maxxis, the Winchester SX4 um, is there enough in the gun to differentiate it from the other two? Well, actually, since I've, I've not actually shot a Maxxis, um, I have briefly had a play around with an SX4. I can say that I think the wood on the, the fab arm is nicer, than certainly, than the, the, uh, the Winchester. But I've not had a play with a Maxxis, so I couldn't really say either way. Um, I know anecdotally that they're all capable of handling different loads, they're all uh, meant to be super quick, they're all meant to be very well handling. Um, but it really is, I think, down to an aesthetic choice uh, with the uh, with the fab arm. It is quite a pretty gun by comparison to the other two, um, and I think that if that's your bag, that's where you'll end up headed. There's certainly nothing wrong with it. Um, I uh, I have no complaints. Um, all right. So thanks very much for watching, everybody. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, please subscribe and drop me a like if you've enjoyed the video, and uh, I'll see you in a couple of weeks.